Hey kids, it's me, Earl. And today's fruit of the spirit is self-control. Oh. Hang on, I got a text. Oh. <sighs> oh, hey guys. Uh, where was I? Through the spirit, self control. Oh, self control. And, oh, hold on, I got a text. Earl, you're talking to the kids. But I got a text. Earl, you're talking to the kids. But I got, but I got it here. Let me take your phone. So today we're talking about. Now I forgot because I wasn't self-control. Self-control. It's a gift from God. We can ask God for that because, wow, sometimes it's hard to... Re oh, I got another text. Earl. I have to ask God for more self-control. Our puppet friends are going to read scripture. And then they're going to act it out for us now about self-control. Is that okay? Can I have my phone now? Yes, Earl. Our scripture today comes from Nehemiah, chapter 4, verses 1 through 23. The Word of God. Now, when Sanbel had heard that they were building the wall, he was angry and greatly enraged, and he jeered at the Jews. What does jeered mean? Made fun of him. Oh, that's mean. Your Majesty, the Jews are rebuilding the wall. What are these stupid Jews doing? Um, my mom says stupid is a mean word and to not say it. I am the king, and I will say what I want. I told Nehemiah not to build that wall. Will they restore it for themselves? Will they sacrifice? Do they think they can finish it in a day? Will they revive it out of the heaps of rubbish? Ha 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 ha! So we build the wall, and the wall was joined together to half its height, for the people had a mind to work. Oh, listen to us, dear God, for we are despised. Turn back their meanness on their own heads. Do not carry their guilt and look at what they have done, for they have provoked you to anger in the presence of the builders. We are building the wall that you asked us to, and everyone is working hard. Give us your strength, O oh God. Amen. But when Sanballat heard that they were repairing the walls of Jerusalem, and it was going forward, and the breaches were beginning to be closed, he was very angry, and plotted to come and fight against Jerusalem. So he prayed to our God and set a guard as protection against them day and night. And the enemy said, They will not know or see till we come among them and kill them and stop the work. Whoa, they're mean. Mm -hmm. So, you know the wall? Yes, and? Well, the Jews are repairing and closing all the breaches. What? Gather my armies. We must come up with a plan to fight against them and create as much trouble as we can. I stationed the people by their clans with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And I looked and arose and said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, do not be afraid. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives, and your homes. Nehemiah, we heard that they are planning to fight us. Oh dear, we must start praying to our God and we will set a guard day and night. Okay, are you sure we should not try and build an army and really go for it? No, God told us to build this wall and nothing will keep us from doing what he asked. When our enemies heard it was known to us that God had frustrated their plans, we all returned to the wall, each to his own work. My king! What is it now? Don't tell me. They ran away scared? Um, no. They are still building the wall, and they have guards standing watch day and night. Nothing is stopping them from building. This will not stand. They will not know what hit them. Before they know it, we'll be at their throats. Right and left. That will put a stop to the work. I don't know about this. They have God on their side. Oh, zip it and get to work. 
From that day on, half of the servants worked on construction, and half held the spears, shields, and bows. The men who sounded the trumpet was beside me, and I said to the nobles and to the officials and to the rest of the people, The work is great and widely spread, and we are separated on the wall, far from one another. And the place where you hear the sound of the trumpet, rally to us there. Our God will fight for us. Nehemiah, everyone is saying that they have surrounded us and they're going to attack. Okay, let's station the people by their clans with their swords, their spears, and their bows. Half will work on the wall and half will stand guard. Each of the builders had his sword strapped at his side where he built. Here, take the sword. Okay, I'm worried that they're going to attack us. Are you sure this is the best thing to do? Do not be afraid of them. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome and fights for us all. There's a lot of work going on and we are spread out all along the wall, separated from each other. When you hear the trumpet call, join us there. Our God will fight for us. So we labored at the work. Half of them held the spears from the break of dawn until the stars came out. They said stupid. Yes, they did, and that wasn't very nice, was it? No. Sometimes when people don't, don't understand other people, or they don't understand why people are doing things, they call them names. That's not good. No, it's not. You're right. God asked the Jews to rebuild the wall. He did. Who's stupid now? Lenny, we don't say stupid. Well, just saying. The important point is that they listened to God and did exactly what he asked them to do. They were very brave. Everyone was against them. They had a lot of opposition. What is opposition? It's when people are against you and people don't want you to do what you're doing. Oh, yeah. Why didn't they build an army to fight? Well, God didn't tell them to build an army. God told them to build a wall. Weren't they afraid? Some were. But you know what? When you trust God completely, he's there during those hard times. It's hard to be scared when God is with you and he's on your side. So they prayed about this, right? They did. And that worked, right? Yes, prayer is very powerful and it works. Hmm. Do you pray? I sure do every day. All the time, in fact. I will, too. That's a great plan. Shall we pray for David and his worship? I think that's a fine idea. L let's go ahead and worship with David, and we'll pray that God touches everybody through David's special form of worship, shall we? Okay. Bye, See you guys. later, guys. imagine the fruit of the Spirit as an actual fruit? I know I do. And when I think about self-control, I think about a plum. Why a plum? Well, you see, when I was a kid, we had a giant plum tree in our backyard. And I loved plums so much, I just wanted to eat them all the time. Now, the tastiest and ripest plums are a delicious purple, but I didn't want to wait for that. I would eat them when they were just a little bit pink. And you know what? They were gross. Because I didn't have the self-control to wait, I kept biting into crunchy plums or sour plums. And then there were less plums later when they were actually delicious. And I remember that because it reminds me that self-control is hard. But do you know what? God has promised to help us show all the fruit of the Spirit and anytime we need God's help, we can just ask him and we can pray. Hey God, please help me show love to my brother or sister or whoever with self-control and he'll help us. So that's what I think of self-control as a plum. Now, who's ready to sing?
last one. We've learned about all the others. So let's try to recite our memory verse together. Are you ready? Galatians 5.22 For the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In our Bible story that our puppet friends acted out, Nehemiah had to have self-control even when people were trying to threaten him. Whoa, that's hard. And self-control is even hard for us today. But when we invite God into our hearts and he works in our lives, he grows self-control in us so that we can act with self-control in a way that we just couldn't do without him. And that's amazing. So let's go ahead and add self-control to our tree. It's our last one. And now we have a full fruit of the spirit tree. I have loved learning every single one of these fruits of the spirits with you. Let's end with talking with God. So we're going to bow our heads, close our eyes, clasp our hands, and focus on God. Dear God, self-control is hard. Please give us self-control that only comes from you. As we grow in our relationship with you, please grow the fruits of the Spirit in our lives. Thank you for all of these amazing fruits. Give us your love, your joy, your peace, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, your faithfulness, your gentleness, and your self-control so that we can show it to others and show you to others. We love you. And all God's children said, Amen. Bye, guys.